that today's speaker is Gloria Yimwaga, who is our policy advisor uh, of land and food rights. So take it away, Gloria. Yes, um, welcome everybody. Please feel free to turn on your camera um, while we are having the seminar. It will be great to see you all. And also we are recording just so you know, so feel free to, um, if you don't want to show your face, you're also allowed not to. Um, yes, so just a little bit about what we are going to do today. So this is one of the series of seminars um, that we are having during the garden fair. And then we are going to be discussing more in details as we go along. So there will be different sessions. And this is the first just part of the introductory about Africa Group and, and the work we do in transforming our food system. So Africa Groupina is a solidarity organization that works with our partners in Sub-Saharan Africa. And we are focused in five countries, that's Angola, Mozambique, Namibia, South Africa, and Zimbabwe. And currently we have more than 33 partners that are working in different development issues and different mobilization and movements. Um, Africa Groupina's work focus on three main area. And our projects are around um, the question of food rights, seed rights, land rights, but also HIV and sexual and reproductive health rights. And we also work with working and living conditions. So trying to um, advocate and push for um, policies and laws that actually reflect good working and living conditions. And just to stress more is that we are a solidarity organization. So we believe in more like a partnership kind of working where we work in collaboration with our partners and just to amplify their voices and um, on their activism work. So in transforming food systems, when we talk about the transformation of our food system, we are currently looking at what is happening in the global uh, food system currently. And as many of you know that our food system and our land system is also um, structured with a lot of injustice in the society. A lot of uh, resources are used, a lot of environmental destruction happen and systems such as patriarchy and capitalism and um, inequality in society uh, makes it even more complex towards that issue. Um, and with, with that, we are going to uh, explore a little bit on the, on the food sovereignty aspect and why is it important, um, yes, on the food sovereignty aspect and why is it important and what we can actually do in ensuring that we have a good uh, and a better food system. Um, with the pandemic that is currently happening, um, Corona has really showed the injustice that exists in the society in terms of distribution of resources, in terms of how you access your food, in terms of also how you access your benefits during the uh, Corona times. And not, not only the pandemic is showing the vulnerability of our food system, but also what happens when it comes to environmental destruction, such as pollution, climate change, and all and all that uh, is cooperated in that. When it comes to uh, the question of environmental destruction, there's a lot of environmental land activists that are being victimized and killed in the process of defending their territories. But also when it comes to climate change issues, we are losing a lot of biodiversity. And this has been happening uh, from 50 years way back. And Currently, the FAO has reported that we have lost more than 70% of our biodiversity. And currently, we are also concentrating more on seven crops that are actually um, um, produced for our food production compared to the enormous amount of biodiversity that we actually have. Those are just a little bit of the current world, but what is really positive about all this aspect is that we see a lot of increase of grassroots activism when it comes to um, fighting for environmental rights and environmental, uh, environmental justice, but also when it comes to climate change activism, as you know, Greta Thunberg, but also many different grassroots organization within Sub-Saharan Africa and other parts of the world. We could also see that there's a lot of push for better laws and better policies. And also this is reflective with the UN Declaration of Peasant Rights that was um, 
actually pushed forward in the UN by La Via Campesina and other organizations. And we could see also communities winning different land grabbing cases, indigenous community reclaiming the land and ensuring that um, the land and communities are protected in the process. So there's a lot of positiveness and activism and awareness building that is happening with this at the same time. So that is a positive aspect towards it. Um, yes. And in this, what exactly has COVID and climate change exposed? So with the pandemic, what the pandemic has actually shown is nothing which is really new, but what it has um, put on the table is just amplify and show that there is injustice in the communities. There is injustice when it comes to access to food. There is injustice when it comes to how we produce food. And during the pandemic, when there was a lot of lockdown, it was also evidenced in different places, for example, in India, in South Africa, and even in Zimbabwe, when it comes to the lockdown, who actually has the right to go out and sell the food? And most of the time, um, supermarkets and big multi national companies were protected in the process and including being given more subsidies com compared to small scale farmers and producers. So with that, it showed that already we are not equal when it comes to accessing food. We are not equal when it comes to even the distribution process and who is protected within the system. And this is because of how we have structured our food system in terms of industrial food production has been always prioritized compared to small scale agro production of food. Again, COVID is actually a wake up call to show that we really need to change our food produ production system because, for example, there was a lot of um, problems when it comes to uh, importing and exporting of food because of the different restrictions that happened, but also people couldn't, again, um, migrate in different places for seasonal workers. So that was also showing like the importance of who do we really depend for the basic needs when it comes to like food. Um, and then with this and climate change, it shows that we have to really change our food system. Um, and one of the very good discussion that was given uh, by the UN Rapporteur was that even before COVID, it was already reported that our industrial food production is not sustainable because our industrial food production is contributing to, towards the highest greenhouse gas emission when it comes to agriculture. And this has to change. So in order for us to change and actually be climate efficient, uh, climate efficient is, me, is that we will have to change the way we use our land and move from this monoculture production into a more diverse and agroecological production system. And this has been evidenced by the IPPC report. It's written that we need to change the way we use land and move more from an industrial to a more agroecological because we are losing a lot of biodiversity. We are destroying the soil, we are destroying the land. And in the process, we are oppressing different communities just in the acquisition of land for this monocultural production. Yes. Um, and in this, this is just like one of the examples of the effects of climate when it comes to climate change is the cyclone in Mozambique. Cyclone Idai and Cyclone Kenneth, which was in 2019. Um, that affected countries within Mozambique, Malawi and Zimbabwe, where 2.2 million people were affected and more than 1000 people lost their life. Again, this shows the evidence that when climate change happens and it affects different communities, it's not necessarily those who actually contribute to the uh, greenhouse gas emission are the one affected. It could happen anywhere. And a lot of destruction of property and livelihood within the community does exist. And the UN reported that more than 773 million was lost in this process. So again, we lose a lot of resources. We use a lot of resources to actually build what we have, but yet because of climate change and because of the way we are producing our food and the way we are um, consuming different products is actually contributing towards climate change. So we need to change the way we are um, using our resources. Um, and then within the 
uh, also within the EU level, there's a lot of discussion on how should we actually do that in terms of the Green Deal um, and how to uh, climate finance should be structured. But when you look at all this, a lot of it is tailored to favor more corporate companies than individual. So there's a lot of discussion and movements from different organizations claiming that this has to change. It shouldn't be corporate captured. It shouldn't be a solution of more of a greenwash solution, but having a solution that actually contributes towards the sustainability of the communities and the environment. Finding a balance, which is pretty hard. But the good thing is that one of the way of actually finding that balance is through food sovereignty. And food sovereignty, um, as you can see, this is this is a picture from La Via Campesina, one of their different activism calling peasant struggles for the right uh, against capitalism and patriarchy. So food sovereignty is a term that was coined by the La Via Campesina in 1996. And it says that people who produce, distribute, consume food should control the mechanism and the policy of food production. Um, rather than corporate companies, which is actually dominating the global food system, uh, where you have currently um, three companies that are controlling more than 63% of the seed production globally, which that shows that is already um, a very big problem when you have monopoly over the food system. And food sovereignty is a very interesting concept because it goes beyond just food security. It also talks about the producers of the food and their right towards land, their right towards their territories, their right towards their water, and also deciding and choosing what kind of production that fits, fit best for them. In that, uh, why food sovereignty and why is it very uh, significant? Food sovereignty talks about the agrarian transformation. So more of the transformation of how we use land, how we use the different resources around it and how we value it. It also talks about promoting more agroecological farming system and not monoculture farming system. So less use of fertilizer, more using of um, uh, the community knowledge in food production, more using of resources in a more sustainable way, which actually contributes to the biodiversity and also diversity of the different food that we produce. It also talks about climate justice as a solution. It talks about the rights, uh, peasant rights, and also control over seed and the different resources. And as, as I was talking before about the UN uh, repertoire, that we definitely produce a lot of food currently, but still the number of people who are hungry keeps increasing. So the question is not that we are producing a lot, but also how are we producing and how are we disseminating the food and who are we producing uh, for the food? Because in some countries, um, they produce a lot of food for uh, animal feed and also the, the food that is produced for the communities are not nutrition efficient. So we really need to change the way we produce food. Um, that's why we as Africa Gripena and our partners are working a lot in the question of food sovereignty, agroecology. And when you listen to the other session, they will go more details to the, for a specific example. But we would also like to stress the importance of the small scale farmers or the food producers themselves compared to um, when we talk to about multinational corporation, it's really important to support uh, small scale farmers, producers within your communities or around the world, and they contribute to a lot of the food production, for example, within um, the countries within Africa, uh, women, female farmers produce um, a lot of the food within the community and in the report uh, within FAO, it was stated that if women have the same access of resources as men, then hunger could be reduced from 150 million. So just having equal access as men, no matter where you are when it comes to resources, could have a huge impact towards how food is produced. And again, when it comes to the question of protection of the environment and nature and uh, diversification of livelihood, small producers, especially women, contribute to a lot of that. And in the process of ensuring that they do have this right, it also reduces the gender related violence in the different communities. So, yeah, again, we call for uh, agroecological transformation in this process where 
uh, we as Africa Group and, I, and also our partners are advocating for agroecology. And it's not just us, it's also different organizations that are pushing forward in the EU level. For example, uh, last year when there was the discussion about CAP, um, that a lot of uh, organization within Europe was also uh, pushing forward agroecology and also biodiversity protection and restoration in the process, but also looking at where does the money go? Because the, 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 when you have finances and subsidies, when it comes to agriculture, when it comes to climate change, in the end of the day is who is actually supported whose innovation is given the money to. It's really important to support small scale producers and small companies um, instead of um, industrial mono, uh, big companies. Yes. Um, we will also just dig deep on the importance of seed. And that will be a session that is gonna come today, later on the day, but just to, to show that the importance of the power of seed. And when you have um, three companies are controlling more than 63% of the agricultural input, it's already an issue because then the laws do reflect to favor the companies more and even the access and distribution favors the company. And in this process, it means that small producers, small breeders within the community are pushed away from their business and they cannot function um, if you have a, mono, a mono, monopoly of the system. As Africa Group and now we also have campaigns that we work with this issues that are related that you are very free to look into our website and read more about it. And then just to stress on why do we work with this issue? Why is it relevant? Again, it's really important to acknowledge, uh, this is a picture from one of the, uh, in, in, in Brazil, one of the indigenous community in their struggle of fighting for their indigenous right. It's really important to acknowledge the injustice that are faced in different spaces. And in this process is actually acknowledging is one process of saying, no, we see you and we do not agree with how our resources are used. We do not agree with the inequality. So it's really important to, to just hop in and be part of the movement. But also it's a part of actually uh, mitigating and reducing the greenhouse gas emission or dealing with climate change through agroecology, through food sovereignty, through protecting of farmers, to in, through protecting of farmers, and also to ensure feminism in the process or protecting women's rights. Yes, and also creating more spaces because currently there's a lot of shrinking spaces when it comes to civil society organizations. And this is more in terms where you have a corporate capture, even in the spaces where small scale producers, uh, um, non-governmental organization were discussing solutions. So right now um, going towards the FAO summit, and the food summit that is coming this year, there's already a, co a corporate capture where you have companies taking in the space and coming in with solution uh, that they see is best, but then it does not benefit the communities. So there's a lot of shrinking spaces on who is actually on the table to discuss this solution. So it's really important to continue push towards the work. Yes. So ending up with uh, a word from uh, one of the activism when it comes to forestry from Kenya, Wangari Mathai, she said that human rights are not things that are put on the table for people to enjoy. They are things that you fight for and then you protect. So it's an ongoing process when it comes to um, protecting the rights of community, when it comes to advocating for the right of community. It's something that you endlessly do. And even if once that right is there, you have to protect it against any kind of capture from um, other others. For example, now when we talk about um, food rights, we talk about corporate captures when you have these big companies as Monsanto and Fengenta. Um, acquiring a lot of land and using a lot of fertilizers, etc. So please stand up for justice and join us in the movement.